Amen. Amen. You are turning your Bibles to Exodus, the third chapter. <coughs> Very popular passage of scripture. Exodus, the third chapter. I'm going to be reading from verses 10 through 14. Lord is in the healing business because I don't even need my glasses this morning. So, Lord Almighty God, we serve. Amen. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel? out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have set thee, when them has brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? And what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. What shall I call him? What name will he go by? Tell him that I am that I am sent you. I want to talk to you briefly from the topic why I believe in him. Dear Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you and we magnify your holy name. Bless and move in a mighty way that your people may receive a word from the Lord. Let us encourage your heart, change your life, but most importantly, let your spirit save a soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We've been teaching in the Bible study. Part of it is helping Minister Crawford get ready for ordination. A series called what we believe and what we believe is without doubt is factual we understand the truth of it we, we believe that there's power in the word of God we believe that God is an almighty God who reigns from heaven above we believe that God will make a way when there seemed to be no way in Sunday school this morning, we asked the question and the students answered. And the question was, what would happen if God did not exist anymore? What would happen when the sun just collides with the earth and all of humanity is consumed in fire? How would the light know when to shy away and darkness will come upon the face of the earth? Who would tell the waters to stop right there at the border? And how would we deal with it when all of the depths of the water came raging over all of the land and everything was mixed together and consumed? It's impossible to go on with life if God is not alive. And so we know all of the what we believe. It's without a doubt what we believe. God is real. And he's real in the world today. It's without a doubt that God is three person, but there's one power that moves and reigns in authority for God Almighty is our creator. If you've been created by God, he's worthy of an amen. We have secondly, we got Jesus who paid the price when we were not worthy to stand in the presence of God. God allowed himself to become flesh and died on the cross so that the price for sin will be paid. None of us were worthy to pay for our own sin. We got Jesus. Jesus. But then we took Jesus and Jesus went back to glory and assumed his role as the great architect of the earth. But he said, I will send my comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, and he shall guide you and be with you. And that's why one touch of his garments can heal a nation. That's why he's here and there and everywhere. That's why the power of God lives in the hearts of us. And that's why we can be now called no longer sinners that are lost in a lonely 
only world, but we are now the sons and daughters of God because it's his spirit that lives on the inside, the same power that he breathed in the mouth of Adam and Eve in that garden. It's the same power that he gives to believers on the inside that we can call up to heaven and ask God, fall on our knees and say, God, I surrender to thee. And God said, I got you in my hands. We can call upon God in times of trouble and there is a connectivity where God says, I have you in my hands. We can walk in this world and we got a God that walks with us and talks with us because his spirit lives on the inside. We're clear on what we believe. But what we're convincing the world today is why we believe in him. See, everybody believe in what they want to believe, but you got to have reasons for why you believe in him. It's easy to look at somebody's house and some ladies can look at a good man that does what he's supposed to do and pay the bills and cut the grass and look respectful and put on a good suit and represents well. And you can stand back and say, I, I understand what it's about that man that she loved, but I still don't know why she love him. And a man can look at another man's situation and see that the wife and the husband are in connectivity with one another and they support one another and he can say I can see what it is about that relationships that make them grow but it's deeper than what we see on the surface in life there has to be a why don't touch that dial right there why I'm not supposed to touch it don't do that. Why am I not supposed to do that? And Christianity is well beyond the answers that we used to receive when we asked our curious why. Mama, why I got to make my bed? Because I said so. Why I don't need to touch that? Because I said so. Why I need to go to church on Sunday? Because I said so. But then God moves in our lives and as we become mature in faith, he gives us reasons why we serve him. It was right there evident with Moses. The first thing Moses did to answer his why he was the one that could go down to Egypt and tell old Pharaoh to let God's people go. When Moses said, God, who am I? The first reason why I serve him is because God accepts who I am Moses said I'm a man of unclean lips God said that's okay Moses said, God, I've been so frustrated. I was hanging out here in this field and I was sitting there with these sheep and I was tired of these sheep dealing with that lying father-in-law Laban and I've been putting up with all this mess and I made up in my mind. I know that sheep are your animals, but I said, if I got to tend to one more sheep, I'm just going to die. And then you had the nerve to light that bush on fire and I looked at that bush and that bush was supposed to burn and I came back 30 minutes later and the bush was still burning and I I looked a little longer and the bush was still burning. I went back to the house and ate some stew beef and I came back out that evening and the bush was still burning. Rain could have fell down from heaven. It didn't matter because when God anointed that bush, that bush was to burn. And Moses said, I looked at the bush and the bush was not consumed. So I knew that I was hearing from the word of God. And one reason why Moses had purposed in his heart that he was going to serve God because God accepted Moses. Moses, even with all of his problems, I mean, Moses had an attitude problem. Moses had a wanted poster where he had killed that Egyptian. Moses had problems on every side. Moses had situations as a baby where Pharaoh knew that that was not his birth son. Moses had troubles where they didn't agree with Moses' wife and said, why did Moses being a blood Hebrew come bring this black woman into our family? But Moses said, with all of of these problems God still accepted me for who I am and one thing we must never forget in the body of Christ is that God could have went all over the world and chose somebody else to redeem the day he saved you he could have chose somebody else to keep the day he kept you he could have found a multitude of sick folks to heal the day he healed you he could have found an army of people to bless the day he blessed you but each and every one of us today they are beneficiaries of God's saving power, healing power, keeping power, loving power, friendship power. And God looked beyond every one of our faults and God chose us. Not only do I choose God because he chose me, but the second question that Moses asked God, well, what's this all about? 
How, how they going to know that you real, God, when I get down there? God said, go down there and tell them that I am sent you. Moses said, well, well, God, what you want me to do? See, the beauty about God is God has a beautiful way of finding what we are capable of. And he puts us to work to make a difference in somebody's life. And that's the reason why Moses built the stronger relationship to serve him. Somebody singing in the choir never thought that you could sing in a choir, but it's by the grace of the Lord that he gave you strength. Somebody's preaching the gospel that never had eloquence of speech, but it's by the grace of God that he gave you power. We've been able to witness the folks that we never thought we could lead to Christ, but it's something about God and his spirit when they come together that they can make a difference in somebody's life God brings us when we celebrate July the 4th we're speaking of when that tea went into that Boston Harbor we're thinking of when those founding fathers of this nation said enough with this foolishness there it was they were tired of Britain but they won't tired of enslaving folks they were tired of Britain but they won't tired of being crooked on every side they were tired of Great Britain but they had all of these problems but yet with all of their weakness and their problems problems God still blessed this great nation and he poured out his spirit so that we can stand up in America with all of her dirty history we still got a God that bless on every side with all of the problems that we deal with Democrat and Republican we still got a God that says the government shall be upon his shoulders with all of the wrong that we have done I'm talking about white America black America immigrant America America. Everybody that's come into this nation has done some wrong. We still got a free flowing air where we can stand in the pulpit and say for Christ the solid rock I stand and all of the ground are sinking sand. Some nations folks are hiding talking about Jesus but we're coming out lifting up the Savior. Some other nations are putting around and moving in tunnels and folks are being killed for lifting up the name of Jesus and we start off our service with the answer for the world how to reach the masses men of every birth for an answer that Jesus gave the key and then he said if I in Psalm 23 if I in John 3 16 if I in Romans 10 19 if I in Romans 10 10 if I in Romans 10 13 if I in John 14th chapter if I in Revelation 21 20 if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me when God give you an assignment even though we got bad roots as a nation God bless anyway even though we got bad activity as a family God bless anyway even though we got some bad stuck up in this in our churches God bless anyway even though we've treated folk wrong God look beyond our folks and God bless anyway God used a murderer like Moses God used a liar like you and us to lift up his name. So Moses said, I believe in him because he's God Almighty and he looked beyond me, but he gave me something to do. Choir, you don't sing because you need a choir, but you ought to be singing because we are reaching the masses, men of every birth. Ushers, you don't stand because the doors need to be swung open. We got hinges for that, but you're standing because we're reaching men of every birth. I'm not preaching because I can put together a manuscript, but I'm preaching because when I fall on my knees and hear that voice, I believe that there is power that can make a difference in somebody's life. That's why I believe. But last, the reason why I believe in him. Moses said, I need a name when I go there. Yeah, I remember when I was a child, I wanted a pair of James Word the New Balances. Red and white, James Worthy, New Balances. Big game, James. James was about tall as my brother Frankie out there. He was slim like brother Kenneth Hester out there. Big game, James could do that spin around real quick. And I had to have me some big, James, big game, James, New Balances. We went down to the store. Went to shoe show in Rocky Mount on Sunset Boulevard. And they had some, some, some shoes in there. I called them cookies. I didn't want them. Then they had some Nikes in there. I didn't want them. 
They had all the shoes, ponies and everything in there. My daddy said, well, well, we got to get a pair of shoes, son. You got to go back to school. I said, if I can't get my James Worthy New Balance, I don't want nothing. Because that name meant something to me. And don't you know that my daddy left out of there and taught me a lesson that day. I didn't get no Nikes. I didn't get no Reebok. I didn't get no ponies. I didn't get no L.A. Gills or no British Knights. I didn't get James Word the New Balance either. I left out of there with nothing that day. But there was another lesson that I learned a little later on. James Word this came on sale down at, at, at the Winter Circle in the mall. And when the sale came on right before school started, Daddy said, well, God is good. We went down to Terrytown Mall and got me some big game James, red and white New Balance that we're back to school. And I felt like I had been blessed. And there was something about the name of those shoes that moved me on the inside. Well, if a piece of China leather can make me get that excited about going back to school, how good it must be to carry the name brand God in my life that's bigger than any other name. So when you start to worshiping and giving our time and attention to other things, we ought to say, if I can't have Jesus and him crucified, I don't want any other name. If I can't have Jesus and him lifted up, I don't want any other name. I know they may worship and have more people, but I'll take Jesus for mine. I know that folk may have more discipline and look like they're doing better, but I'll take Jesus for mine because any God that can hold it pattern of who is the creator he can stand up and say I am that I am if there's any God that can say where did life come from he can stand up and say I am that I am if I can ask the question who knew me in my mother's womb before I was even born in this world I got a God that can stand up and say I am that I am who holds the keys of life in the palm of his hands God can stand up and say I am that I am that's why I serve him I got cancer running in my body is there anybody that can heal my body I can look to the heavens and God can say I am that I am I've been kept by the power of God and I got a home in glory who can wash away my sins he can stand up and say I am that I am who can welcome me home in glory he can say I am that I am who in the world had time to build me a matching in heaven he can say that I am I am I can look at this old body and see this arthritis and I can tell my arthritis in my fingers you may follow me around earth but you won't be able to follow me in heaven arthritis can answer back and say how you think you gonna separate from me who in the world can get me out of your body I can hold my hand up to the Lord and the Lord can speak from glory and say I am that I am my marriage is falling apart who can help my marriage marriage come back together we can fall on our knees and cry to the Lord and the Lord can open up the curtains of glory and say I am that I am so I'm gonna serve him because everything I need what I am not God can say I am everything I don't have what I cannot provide God can stand up and say I am and the good thing about it when I think about my brother John when John went over to Calvary and John John was reflecting upon what can wash away my sins. John said, I looked up in the glory and I was wondering who in the world is eligible to take the book and open the seals thereof. When I saw the Lamb Book of Life, it was carved out with blood all on the spine. There were blood all on the pages. There were generations from north and south and east and west. There were black people and white people and Jewish people and Asian people and Hispanic people there were names and numbers and nationalities that I had never heard of before John said he cried because he didn't see one that was worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof and then an old man in glory said young man don't cry no more because there is one that is worthy to take the seal and open the book thereof and John said who in the world 
world could be worthy. The old man went around and said, do you remember, John, when there was a march from the praetorium up to the road of Emmaus? Do you remember when there was an old rugged cross sitting out there at Golgotha Hill? Do you remember when it was about time for the ninth hour? Darkness came upon the face of the earth. The earth shook for a minute. The veil of the temple was rent. Do you remember when the world looked up there? They saw a savior that had done no wrong and they were stretching him wide. They pierced him in his side. They beat him and mocked him and he hung there and he bled there and he died there. Well, let me tell you something. They wrote on his grave. They said he was the king of the Jews and he was king of the world. I got good news for you, John. He didn't need them to tell him because if you wanted to know who is the king of glory, he could just stand up and say, I am that I am who is the almighty God. I am that I am who is El Shaddai. I am that I am who is Jehovah Jireh. I am that I am who is Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, my all in all, my everything, who's my mind regulator, my prince of peace, my everlasting father, my king of glory my great redeemer, my shepherd that sit high, who is my savior, my messiah, my mighty one, my all in all I got a savior in glory, the same one Moses saw in the God the same way David saw when he was fighting Goliath, the same one Mary carried in her borrowed, in her tomb, in her belly, the same one that they looked for in the borrowed tomb the same one that met Paul on the road to Damascus, the same one that pulled John from the Isle of Patmos it was Jesus Christ, King of King, Lord of Lords, our mighty God, I am that I am. That's why I believe in him. When everything is laid out on the table, what I'm not, Jesus can stand up and say I am. What I do not have, Jesus can stand up and say I am. And what I cannot do, Jesus can stand up and say, I am what I am. And not only could God bless Moses, but his blessing power is alive today. And if you are here and something is missing in your life, why not step out in faith and say, God, I want to give you what's not enough. And I want to ask, is there someone who is bigger than I that can take this burden away? And we're going to pray with you. And Jesus is going to step out from glory. Say whatever problem you have. I am. That I am. If you're here today. And you've never given your heart to Jesus. Today you want to be a Christian. When you step out in faith. Secondly. If you remember the day you got saved. Remember the day you got baptized. But I just want to start over. Will you step out in faith? Maybe you're here and you just learned about Jesus. And today I want, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to make up my own. Will you step out in faith? And last, if there's someone here today, something in your family, something in your life where you just need a closer walk with God, will you come? Digging more and I'll stand in there at the altar, will you come?